Okay. All right. Today we've got a little bit more of an unhinged video. We're gonna be covering exactly how to vapor blast an engine part or an engine, and we're gonna be covering it step by step. Let's get into it. Step number one, which I forgot to do, is roll up your sleeves. My hands are now dirty, so I'm not gonna do that, but in your case, you should probably do that. Then, we're going to actually inspect the part we're gonna be working with. This is a junkyard head. I believe this is out of our Chevy motor that we brought in, the V6, so I do not feel bad about tossing it around in the slightest. What we're gonna be focusing on today, just so we can use this in future videos, you can actually see a little bit of this was soda blasted beforehand. I'm gonna be focusing on this bottom portion here. We're gonna be vapor blasting it. I'm going to be throwing this directly into a glass bead machine. This is gonna be the VH800FL, just so I can show you exactly what this thing can do out of the box, to show you what kind of results you can get. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this is a legitimate tidbit. If it is covered in grease, this one has already been hydroblasted, so it's not caked up. But if this thing was covered in grease and grime, you should, you should absolutely parts wash it or rinse it off beforehand. That way you're not contaminating your machine now, is your machine capable of handling a part that's greasy? Absolutely. That's one of the benefits of vapor blasting is since there's water incorporated into the process, you can take something that has grease and grime on it, put it directly into the machine and not have a problem. But just to keep your media and water to the optimal level for longer, I would absolutely recommend rinsing your parts beforehand. So now we've got the part loaded in. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust us up to 100 PSI. That's where I'm gonna be starting at. Let's talk about glass bead, which again is what we're using inside of this VHA 100FL. It's a circular abrasive, therefore it's very good at polishing. It is not intended to actually strip a part of anything. So this thing's got rust, it's got some paint actually left over on it. It's also got gasket material, but this will be a great demonstration of what it's capable of. Now, if you are doing any sort of heavy corrosion, heavy contaminant, heavy paint removal off of a part, we would recommend something like an aluminum oxide, a silicon carbide, or if your case is incredibly severe, something like a crushed glass. Hopefully this will leave us with a usable result and it's gonna be a one-stop shop. Let's see what we can do. Wow. So what are we on step two now? It's three, this is step three. So vapor blasting step three. So you guys can see, remember earlier I said that glass bead is not typically an abrasive that we use for cutting. And you can see this, this base layer here is paint. This is not any sort of oil. So it's actually very impressive that this thing was able to remove it. Now we were blasting at a higher pressure. We were at 100 PSI. One common misconception that I wanna go ahead and dispel is that if you are having trouble removing something, you can just increase the pressure. That's not accurate at all, especially when it comes to vapor blasting. Now, does it help? Yes, absolutely. Does it change your finish characteristics? Absolutely. But the actual abrasive has more of an impact on the stripping ability than the pressure. Again, this goes down to the actual makeup of the abrasive itself. Again, if you were to look at something like an aluminum oxide or a silicon carbide under a microscope, they're very angular and they have very sharp edges versus a glass bead, it's spherical. Same thing goes for ceramic bead as well. Again, those are all spherical abrasives. They are made to polish, but in this case, we were actually able to remove paint with it. Now that we have vapor blasted this part, again, I'll show you guys better close-up footage of this in just a second. What you absolutely want to do is thoroughly rinse and dry this part. Abrasive is very, 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 very good at getting in places that you do not want it. That goes for wet blasting and sand blasting alike. If you have a hydro blast machine, which is one of our high pressure parts washers, now would be a very good time to use it. So you can actually take this thing, 
put it inside the Hydro Blast, rinse it with that high pressure water, displace any of the media that is left internally or on the surface, and then you are left with a perfectly clean part. If you do not have a Hydro Blast, again, just rinsing thoroughly and drying it is a very good option, as well as using a dip tank or an ultrasonic cleaner. All right, so even though this video may have been a little bit more unhinged, try and make it a little bit more serious here at the end. Hopefully this goes to show just how easy it is to actually get up and running and using vapor blasting, especially on engine components, which is where it truly shines. A few of the reasons why vapor blasting is so useful when it comes to engine components. First of all, you do not get this shine or level of beautification from any other process, especially when it comes to any sort of media blast. It has to be done with wet blast to be able to achieve this level of polish. That being said, wet blasting does not damage your sealing surfaces, which means any of these mating faces on the side, you don't have to worry about pitting, you don't have to worry about hot spotting, you don't have to worry about any of that because the inclusion of the water in the blasting process actually lowers the impact velocity of that media so that you do not damage the substrate. You are changing your surface roughness, yes, but as far as your actual mating surfaces go, they are perfectly fine and you do not have to worry about removing any of that base material. Now, additionally, when it comes to vapor blasting, you do not have to worry about embedding media. If you are using traditional sandblast where you are propelling that abrasive and it's impacting the part directly, you do have to worry about the metal actually retaining some of that abrasive. Typically, this doesn't work its way out until you put the part back into use. So in an automotive application, whenever the, the motor itself goes under heat or stress, that abrasive can work its way out and that can become a serious nightmare. So again, with wet blasting, because of that lowered impact velocity, you do not have to worry about media embedment. And the last thing I wanna mention regarding vapor blasting is that your actual media retention in the part is not as bad as it would be with a typical sandblast. What I mean by that is because the water is mixed into a slurry, First of all, it allows it to flow over the parts. You can clean nooks and crannies better, but you do not have to worry about your media being stuck inside of the part. Typically, it flows out. Now, again, we always recommend that you thoroughly rinse and, and dry your parts afterwards, but as far as it actually going into a part and hard packing inside of a channel or a valley, that typically doesn't happen as much as it does in standard sandblast. So again, to recap exactly what you need to do to vapor blast, first of all, get your part. Second of all, you need to choose your media. We actually have a very good sales team up front that can help you determine exactly exactly what media you need to be blasting with, whether it's a glass bead, aluminum oxide, silicon carbide, or a mixture of the abrasives. Again, we have the free application testing program, which is where if you have parts that you are blasting on a daily basis, you can send them into us. We will test them for you and tell you exactly what you need to be using to achieve the results that you want in the most efficient manner. That is completely free. It's a service that we offer to anyone, whether you're a hobbyist or a business that we need to sign an NDA for, we can offer that service to anyone. We'll put a link to that in the description below. But again, once you figure out what brace if you need. I would always recommend pre-rinsing your parts if they have any grease, grime, or loose corrosion that you can take off. And then after that, it's just vapor blasting. So it's very simple. We probably spent, I would say, two minutes on the portion that we did here removing paint, vapor blasting itself very quick. Then afterwards, you just want to make sure that you are thoroughly rinsing and cleaning your parts, and this thing is good to go. Again, there is no better way of achieving these beautiful results in essentially a one-step process. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. We love interacting with you guys and answering your questions. And if there's anything you would like to see us blast, put it in the comments below. We'll see if we can do that. Also, go check out the rest of our videos. I know I've mentioned a few other processes here like hydro blasting and sandblasting. We have thousands of videos on all of these different processes that you guys can check out by checking out our YouTube channel. Hopefully you guys found this video informative and we will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Also, if you guys are a business and you are running repeat parts, make sure you guys check out the description below. We'll put a link to this right here. This is an automated wet blast system that is incredibly adaptable. Basically, any part you put in there, this thing can be taught to blast it. And within a matter of 20 minutes and 20 lines of code, you can have a fully automated machine that's up and running.